Hey, what's up, hello? My name is Naima. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about this buzz going around with the Honey Pot, the controversy of their formula changes, and still being black owned, even though people were coming at sis about not being black owned with no confirmation. Whoa. And I also thought it would be a great time to really talk about what is black owned and what isn't black owned just in time for Juneteenth and for Black Business Month that's in August. So I'm definitely going to give in my, my two cents or whatever because I got shit to say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And before we get into the tea, I want to make sure y'all are subscribing to my channel. Make sure you are subscribed. Click the notification bell so you know that each time I upload, you will be notified. And I never mentioned this, but make sure you're following me on my socials, girl. Like, what are you waiting on? I'm active on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, girl. So you get into the vibes, period. So without further ado, let's get into the tea of what's going on, okay? Okay, so long story short, what happened was that there were tweets on Twitter that went viral because the Honey Putt had changed the formula without any sort of communication. So because they had changed the formula, people ran with the idea that they had sold their company off to the, if you know, you know. And because of that, people hop in the comments of the CEO and the brand just outrage, like question them why, their frustration, and the one, two, three, the ABC, da, 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 da. And I don't condone hopping in the comments, especially with no sort of confirmation that it was indeed sold. So I did feel bad for the CEO, especially because the people literally bullied her into explaining what was going on. Why did you do this? And though I am against that, I kind of understand why, especially coming from a black woman's perspective, um, especially when we have a brand that we love and adore that is made by us for us, the moment it goes mainstream and gets a lot of attention, they tend to switch up, you know, um, mostly for the money and just lose the whole integrity of the brand and what it was built on and just refocus the targeting audience on you follow okay <laughs> so um i want to share my two cents because i do understand why they did it again i'm not condoning it i am against it but i understand why let me tell you so in my honest opinion i feel like it's a ptsd kind of thing so when we find a business, a brand, especially if it's black owned, chef's kiss, you know, we find something that's made by us for us. We feel seen, we feel heard, and they make products that we can resonate with, we can connect with, and we enjoy using, you know what I'm saying? And when it comes to black people, especially black women, our impact, our power, our support, and our love to represent a brand is everything. Everything. So when we find something that we really fuck with, we want to go hard. We want to put people on game with the shit. You know what I'm saying? So... The problem is more so not wanting more money, not getting more attention, cause shit, you grow, we grow. You know what I mean? It's more so of losing their integrity, losing their purpose, losing their control the moment they sell it to the next man or the next bitch or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? So when they do that, Something that was once for us, that was made that was made to be seen by us, heard by us, loving us and caring for ourselves as black women, it gets refocused to catering to the someone that isn't a black woman, you know? And then 
the thing about it too most of these brands that do sell out discredit black women for what they have done and that be the biggest slap in our faces this rumor circulating about being sold did not settle well for people and the outraged without getting further confirmation not even doing further research and I do agree that the honey pot should have been more open with communication about the products especially when the products were marketed to be organic plant-based or derived whatever the fuck they had used originally that was the whole purpose of black women going out to their products buying out their products every single time so if i have learned anything from this little controversy with the honey pot is a couple things one when it comes to black owned businesses specifically black woman owned businesses we don't get enough grace. Two, the lack of research people do, they don't do enough fact checking for me. You know, you go with a rumor, you go with something viral, and then people run with it immediately without questions asked. And that's not how y'all should be going about things. And that's why I have a love-hate relationship with social media, because we have all this advanced technology. We have Google that is free and available. So you mean to tell me you couldn't just Google a question, is the honeypot still black owned on your browser? Please. Um, and three, I feel like people have this thing about going back and forth. You know, this notion of I said what I said you know, and not taking into account that you are wrong and loud at that. You know, like, not everything you say will be correct. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's going to be times where you have to be educated. And whether you are open enough to hear what they have to say, or you're going to continue to be ignorant and still look stupid. So, <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, like, to be clear, confirmation, the honey pot is still black owned, okay? Like, they are doing better now. They have posted their apologies on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. So, they are making effort. And as well as teaming up with chemists, um, they're teaming up with, I believe, estheticians to further educate people on why they are changing the formulation and what you should know about the upcoming changes. And that's all you can do. You can appreciate that, you can respect that and move forward. And if this rumor controversy thing is a deal breaker for you, you can no longer support the honey pot, baby, you do what you need to do, <laughs> okay? Okay, you do what you need to do, but it's still black owned. It's not like they did not sell to the white man, the white bitch, or whatever the fuck. So let's to, 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 let's tone it down. Because the way people had switched up on a rumor, then a confirmation, was very alarming. Yikes. Okay? Like, ooh, okay? <laughs> so with that being said, I do want to talk about brands that are not black owned, that you probably are using. And now I'm not slandering them. I'm not gendering them. This is just for me to share the information. You do what you want with the information. It's up to you. You are responsible to do it on your own, to do research and see if whether or not this will still be a brand, if they have the products to still make you stay and still support. You know, like, I don't have that power to tell you to not fuck with a brand anymore. Like, who the fuck am I, bitch? But I'm letting you know for awareness and for you to do further research. Because maybe what I have up my sleeve isn't all that correct. You know? Like, I might not have all the answers, baby, but you know who do? Google. Google that shit, hell. Period, okay? So let's get into 
five brands that you think is black owned that's targeted for black people specifically black women but they're not black owned oh let's get into it first on the list is Cantu Cantu is actually owned by PDC brands and as of February of 2020 they have a white CEO which I don't know the name of because I don't really care to know their names yeah I don't care Number two on the list is Carol's Daughter. Carol's Daughter was founded by a black woman named Lisa Price in 1993, but was sold to L'Oreal in 2014. Next on the list is The Main Choice, and The Main Choice is founded by Courtney. I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but I will be sure to leave her name on the screen. She is still the CEO of the brand, but the brand is no longer owned by her, it is owned by Math Beauty. Next on the list is Shea Moisture. Shea Moisture was actually founded by Naima Tubman and Rich Dennis, and is actually owned by Dennis' company called Sendow Brands, but Sandal Brands is now under Unilever as of 2017. Last on the list is Soft Shane Carlson. So you may know them for brands like Less Jam, Dark and Lovely, The Magic Shave Powder, and etc. They were founded by a black couple named Edward and Betty Ann Garner, but in 1998 it was acquired by L'Oreal after merging with Carlson Products. So we have reached the end of this video. I want to thank you all so much for watching to the very end. And if you would like to read more on what we had discussed today, please make sure to look down in the description box below. I will make sure to put everything from the tweets, the articles, and the list of non-black businesses to look out for. And this is just to say again, this is not to shame or judge anyone. This is just for your awareness. And if you would like to do more research, Google is free, bitch, okay? So thank you so much. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And click the notification bell so you know that each time I upload, you will be notified. And don't forget to follow me on my socials, bitch. I am I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, and I'm on Twitter. Get into a child. So thank you so much. And until next time, to the loo, bitch. <laughs>